President Joe Biden made the first U.S. federal proclamation recognizing March 31st as Trans Visibility Day. Now, this day is dedicated to celebrate transgender people by providing awareness and to the discrimination and violence they face every day. Faculty and students at the University of Houston, Victoria, can receive training to increase awareness and have a better understanding of what LGBTQ plus issues are about. Freddie Cantu, assistant director of UHE's Diversity and Inclusion Office, says students can earn certificates that allows them to wear rainbow graduation cords. So specifically for our transgendered and gender um, non-binary students, we host um, two events throughout the year. In the fall semester, we host uh, the Transgender Day of Remembrance. It's on November 20th. Um, so that event honors um, individuals that we've lost to you know, anti-transgender violence. Um, but we, of course, we, we keep it positive. We um, spread, help spread awareness, share some information, have some fun giveaways, um, that kind of thing. So really just helping, helping spread awareness and um, uh, uh, helping students recognize privilege and things like that um, in a very positive and, uh, a way. A national alliance which actually provides statistics on homelessness shows that one in three trans people experience homelessness. They also face discrimination in employment, housing, and health care accommodations. President Joe Biden also addressed that 44 transgender people were killed in the U.S. just this year. A record 23 of them were black trans women. The president says his administration is implementing new policies to protect trans people. All right, time to check in with weather real quick. Happy Feeling Friday. Good How are you doing? Good. Busy day, huh? Busy, busy, busy week. week. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Brian Alonzo will miss you next week. Yeah, definitely yes. already looking forward to some time off. This week has been pretty busy for us with the launch of our new uh, weather graphics system. We got that all in place. And hey, taking a look at what's going on outside right now. Yeah, a lot of sunshine. Got those high, thin, cirrus clouds out there. Current temperature right now in Victoria, 67 degrees. We got those winds now coming in out of the southeast at 16 miles an hour. So these dew points that are in the 40s right now, it's dry air. That's going to be changing as we go through the upcoming weekend. We're going to talk much more about that coming up here in just a couple of minutes. James. Brian, thank you. The murder trial of Daniel Mendoza and Goliad went into recess Thursday afternoon after emotional testimony from the family of the victim. Brianna Bexley, the girlfriend of 19 year old Nathan Cortinas, was called to the stand during the second day of the trial. Bexley provided details regarding the incident and shared messages Mendoza sent her following the fatal shooting. She also recounted her boyfriend's final words. He was a father. His child survived the shooting. The case will resume on Monday morning with more from Bexley. Wharton County law enforcement have identified the two people involved in a fatal crash following a chase Thursday. The passenger died in this crash. We have 25 News. Cristian Delgado live with us with an update. Cristian. On Thursday, the Warden County Constable's Office responded to a call about a chase coming from Fort Bend County into Warden County. Constable Szymanski says his team set up spikes to try and stop the vehicle, but it was unsuccessful. He says the suspect continued to drive away on U.S. Highway 90A. The suspect drove into a gravel area and lost control, crashing into a culvert. Authorities called in an emergency helicopter, but there was little they could do for the passenger. The victim was put on the uh, helicopter and transported to Memorial Hermann Hospital in the medical center in Houston. Uh, unfortunately, the passenger, due to the extent of her injuries, succumbed to her injuries and passed away on the scene. Authorities identified the deceased passenger as 51-year-old Julia Annette Moreno. The driver is 54-year-old Raymond Charles Lights. He remains in the hospital. Warden County officials will continue working with Texas DPS to investigate the incident. Reporting live, I'm Christian Delgado, 25 News Now. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you so much, Christian. In Houtsville, in the 200 block of East 4th, authorities arrested and charged a woman accused of having drugs. It started with a traffic stop. Police say it happened around 1 o'clock today near Sacred Heart Catholic School. That means the charge was enhanced because she was in a drug-free zone. The suspect was taken to the Lavaca County Jail. There's still time to get your COVID-19 vaccine at the Knights of Columbus Hall in El Campo. It's a drive through event that lasts until 7 tonight. You don't need to make an appointment or pre-register. Vaccines are available to anyone 16 years and older. Any form of ID is accepted. Now, before we go to break, here's a look at today's viewer poll question right in time for the weekend because March just zoomed by. Here's the question for you. What are your plans for Easter? 
safe, small gathering, park, churches. We want to keep hearing from you about this. Come to our website, crossroadstoday.com slash vote. Stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now. A recent study shows how quickly COVID-19 can spread on center surfaces. Also ahead today, jurors hear a fifth day of testimony in the trial of Derek Chauvin, the former police officer charged with killing George Floyd. We must keep things clean. So why not your car? Rapid Express Car Wash offers multiple unlimited car wash packages so you can clean your car any day of the week and the next day, and the next day. Rapid Express Car Wash, quick, easy, clean. The reasons to treat yourself to a frozen drink from McDonald's go on and on and on. Shall I go on? It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Enjoy a delicious ice cold frozen Fanta Wild Cherry, frozen Coke, or frozen Fanta Blue Raspberry. Any size for only $1.79. ACASA is a court-appointed special advocate. CASA volunteers come from all walks of life, just like the kids in foster care they help. They go through training to learn how to advocate for the best interests of children and their families before being assigned to a child's case by a judge. CASA collaborates with adults in a child's life, including their family of origin, foster family, teachers, and medical professionals. This support system, which includes caseworkers and attorneys, leads to a greater sense of connection and stability for the child and family. Want to know how we make your glasses so fast? It's all done right here. With a lab in every store, our skilled techs handle your glasses from start to finish. You get them in as little as 30 minutes. No cut corners, just quality, affordable glasses. Only at iMart Express. Strong women, the hottest topics, sharing their views right here. I want to say something about that. That's the kind of women we are. And that's why the most watched number one daytime talk show is ABC's The View. In times like this, we must keep things clean. So why not your car? Rapid Express Car Wash offers multiple unlimited car wash packages so you can clean your car any day of the week and the next day and the next day. Rapid Express Car Wash, quick, easy, clean. Totally unnecessary. This is what the head of the Homicide Division for the Minneapolis Police Department described Derek Chauvin's actions before the day George Floyd died. Chauvin, now fired from the force, has pleaded not guilty to multiple charges, including second degree unintentional murder. If your knee is on a person's neck, that can kill him. The longest serving and most senior member of the Minneapolis Police Department says Derek Chauvin went against training during the arrest of George Floyd. In all the years you've been working for the Minneapolis Police Department, uh, been trained to kneel on the neck of someone who is handcuffed behind their back in a prone position. No, I haven't. What level of force might that be? That would be the top tier the deadly force. Chauvin's knee was on Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. Pulling him down to the ground face down and putting your knee on the neck for that amount of, uh, that amount of time is just um, uncalled for. Minneapolis Police Department policy allows a police officer to use whatever means are, ne are available to him to protect himself and others, right? Yes. Did you see any need for Officer Chauvin to improvise by putting his knee on Mr. Floyd for nine minutes and 29 seconds? No, I did not. Lieutenant Richard Zimmerman testifying officers have a duty to provide life-saving care even before paramedics arrive. You need to uh, provide uh, medical care for the person that is in distress. By now, we all know COVID-19 spreads through droplets that go into the air when a person talks, sneezes, coughs, or breathes. That's right, but there is a recent study that shows how it may also spread through some surfaces in places like schools and daycares. When it comes to coronavirus, knowing how it spreads can help stop the spread. That's why researchers at Emory University teamed up with the CDC to study how the virus may move around places like schools and daycares. They found surfaces are an important source of risk. 
particularly hard, like non-porous objects like countertops or, or plastic toys, for example. Ben Lopeman is senior author of the study. The professor at Emory's Rollins School of Public Health says frequent cleaning is important. Where people spend a lot more time, like in a school, like in a daycare or in an office setting, where people, if someone's infectious, they can keep contaminating a surface, more frequent cleaning is required. But in schools, he says even hourly cleaning may not provide enough protection. He says the best way to reduce risk is to avoid contaminating those surfaces in the first place. So things like mask wearing is a great way to avoid contamination. With no vaccine currently authorized for children, Lopeman says it's more important than ever to contain the coronavirus's spread in schools and daycares. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. North Dakota is under a state of wildfire emergency over a fire that forced an entire town to evacuate. Authorities say down power lines sparked the fire, which burned nearly 10,000 acres so far. The U.S. Forest Service took these pictures of the wildfire near Medora. The service says the smoke is impacting traffic in that area. The neighboring South Dakota declared a state of emergency Tuesday over a fire really close by and closed by Mount Rushmore. Yeah, definitely some dry conditions going up north. And of course, we've got dry conditions here. We're going to take a look at the drought monitor that came out this week. And we're going to be talking about how we could see a couple of showers if we go through the upcoming Easter weekend. All of that coming up after the break. Stay with us. I'm Annie Flynn Ray Bello. Had too many husbands, picked up too many names. She's an advocate, author, and activist. Most folks these days just call me Rebel. Let's go fight this thing. Rebel premieres Thursday on ABC. Join Pastor Jim Graff for This Is Living, 30 minutes of practical Bible teaching with insight you've been looking for, filling your heart with hope and sure to make you smile. Each Sunday at 8 a.m. on KAVU. Art can do anything. Art can create new worlds and new emotions. Art can even create new jobs. Across Texas, nearly 900,000 people are employed in creative careers. With your support, there's nothing art can't do. Support the arts. Support Texas at artcantexas.org. Ellen's back from spring break and all new. Anybody here on spring break? Thanks for keeping your clothes on. And next new Ellen from Wipeout, John Cena. Where are you? Are you in some kind of void? So this is where they keep me. <laughs> Plus, Danielle Brooks and Holy Roller. Victoria Amerty and Asthma. It's what we do, it's all we do, it's our specialty. If air makes you sneeze, you itch from dust mites or fleas. We do that, we do that. If you can't catch your breath, simple actions make you want to rest. We do that too. Victoria, allergy and asthma. It's what we do, it's all we do, it's our specialty. Your Dr. Phil favorites. Stop! You don't have an anger problem, you don't have a weed problem. That's a relief. It's been over a year. It's good to be back. So how's he doing now? What the hell are you doing out on the patio smoking dope with your brother? Dr. Phil. Where are they now? I'm telling you, you're in danger. You need to get out of this relationship. But did Heather leave college? New Dr. Phil. And welcome back, everybody. We have a viewer poll question out there for this upcoming weekend. We wanted to share that with you. Here it is. Warmer temperatures are on the horizon. And what do you think about that? Tell us how you feel. Well, do you love it? Is it too soon? Or bye bye spring? Well, love it. Right now, people over 55% are saying that they absolutely love it. 37 too soon. 8% say bye bye spring. So. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. You can head over to our website, crossroadstoday.com or slash vote weather. You can uh, uh, put your opinion there or at the same time, you can head over to our handy dandy Crossroads Today app. And of course, you can also vote there as well. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what's been happening 
with the drought monitor. We have an update from you that for you this week and not much change here, but of course we are talking about this extreme category setting up for parts of our western counties heading over to Beeville as well as in Goliad County and even the uh, extreme category is kind of setting up, but especially to our east as well. So we're kind of sandwiched here, especially in Victoria, but we are going to continue to expect that these uh, drought conditions will continue to worsen, especially as we go through the next uh, couple of weeks here because we're not expecting any really big rain chances in the forecast. That's unfortunate. As far as what's going on here with our temperatures right now into the 60s for the most part for across our for the crossroads here, but you head a little bit further up to the north and even to the west. You're seeing those temperatures into the 70s and as far as those dew points into the 30s and 40s. So we're still talking about some dry air out there despite us having winds coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. But as we go through tonight and overnight, we are going to continue to expect these numbers to go up and this is just going to help fuel maybe a couple of spotty showers as we go through this weekend. Let's show you what's happening here on the satellite and radar combination. Yeah, we got just a couple of these high clouds out there, but as I expand the view, we're really kind of focused what's going on, especially out to our west. I'm going to be watching this area out in West Texas, especially tonight. You can see our low pressure system and you know what low pressure system does. It causes lift in the atmosphere, especially out ahead of the low. So we'll be watching this area and here's why, because as we get into later on tonight, we're going to be watching uh, some showers already starting to develop in parts of West uh, Texas and even North northern parts of Mexico and eventually this shower activity will start moving eastward. Now that we're stopping the clock here at Saturday at five o'clock. I wanted to kind of indicate that we're already going to start to have a mostly cloudy to even a cloudy sky. And look what happens as we go a little bit further in time as we get into the afternoon hours of Saturday. A few spotty showers will be out and about here, but right now I'm only rating the odds here about 20%. I think most of the area is going to be on the dry side. We might get a couple of breaks in the clouds in the evening hours, but once we get into Sunday, especially in the morning again, we're going to have the clouds returning and we could even see a couple of spotty showers in the morning and even in parts in the afternoon. We'll have to watch out and see how far uh, some of this precipitation off to our west moves in. This model only goes out to about two o'clock Sunday afternoon, but we're definitely going to keep our rain chances on the low side at this particular time. But you definitely want to tune into meteorologist Howard Gordon uh, start, starting tomorrow at 10 o'clock uh, because he'll give you an update on that. We don't have an early show tomorrow, but here's your forecast as we go through tonight. We're going to go with an overnight low temperature right around 52 degrees, increasing clouds. Those winds out of the southeast at 5 to 10 before tomorrow, 73 degrees. Those winds are going to be out of the southeast at 10 to even 20 miles an hour isolated showers. So it is going to be also on the breezy side, but high temperatures are going to continue to increase into the mid 70s for your Sunday, maybe perhaps slightly better odds for some of that rain, especially on Monday right now, about 30%. But you'll notice the gradual warm up with these temperatures, and that's why we did the viewer poll, because look at this, we're going to be getting almost close to near 90 degrees, especially on Thursday. Now there's some discrepancy on whether a front will actually move through on Friday, maybe even Thursday, uh, but right now I'm going to keep the uh, temperatures a little on the warm side. We'll definitely keep you updated next week. Of course, meteorologist Howard Gordon will once again be filling in for me next week as I'm taking a little time off.